Did you know we've got a checking account? Did you know we have a podcast to help you? (laughs) You're listening to the Credit Union Leadership Podcast, a podcast that delivers value and offers up insight that'll help your credit union grow. Service Star has been consulting with credit unions for over 20 years, growing them in the areas of cultural development, leadership development, and management training. To learn more about what Service Star can do for you or your credit union, check them out at servicestarconsulting.com. Here we go. Uh, Welcome to the Credit Union Leadership Podcast. I'm Scott Anderley, and we've got... Scott Albrecht on the ones and twos talking about champions. Mm -hmm. Referral sales champions. And specifically today, we want to talk about uh, some challenges with referral sales and how systems get in the way of being human. What is the challenge that our listeners are facing at their credit union when it comes to referral sales? Yeah. So a referral is where I go into deposit a check. That happened this morning. This morning, I went to my credit union. I deposited a check. The member service representative who I hired, by the way, at my credit union, took a look at my account and said, you need a CD. You're not making as much money on your savings account as you could. You could make so much more money on the certificate of deposit. That is a referral. Now, many credit unions try to do something with this this behavior uh, Mm -hmm. because what gets measured gets respected and what gets inspected gets respected. And so... Uh, they'll they'll create referral tracking systems. And the problem with the referral tracking systems is people stop referring well <laughs> just so they can get a point on the scoreboard. So sometimes we build systems. Like for instance, here at Service Star, we're creating workflows that we can put into monday.com to track to-dos that we have on our list. And all that is well-intentioned. But if you forget why the workflow and we start to maybe compensate for how many tasks you get done in the day, that system also can easily be abused. It doesn't take much for the human mind to kind of see how these systems, when set up with well intentions, can start to get abused if the why and the context behind the system itself is not thoroughly communicated by the manager um, so that it's not gamified for for the, (laughs) with with a negative impact being on the member. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say is that systems, though they have good intentions at the creation, as time goes on, these systems could actually be getting in the way of us providing the most benefit. Yeah. It's more important to to coach a behavior than to create a system. Some people will throw money at like a Salesforce or a CRM system, thinking that that's going to solve all of their their sales Mm -hmm. problems, right? Like if we just we just buy this huge cumbersome customer relationship management program or member relationship management program, well, then we can see all of the people we talk to about a new membership and we can see how many of those, you know, aren't being fulfilled. And all of that is true. If the people who are using the system are using it well, and they're not just putting in the leads that they're doing new memberships for. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so the system in and of itself is never the solution. And and anytime that we're tempted to think that if we throw money at a system as a solution without actually proper coaching and management is a time that uh, we're just we're wasting our money. We've got to continue to coach behaviors regardless of the system. And if we coach the behaviors, good things are going to happen. And if we don't, mm-hmm. bad things are going to happen. Let me give you an example. Let's say at my old credit union. There's a system in place. If you get 20 referrals, you get a day off. I don't know if that's a thing. It's not a thing where I used to work, but maybe it's a thing someplace else. 20 yeah. referrals, you get to keep your job. I don't know. 20 referrals <laughs> and you start making $10 on a credit card. Whatever the system is, let's say I didn't need a CD. Let's say it wouldn't actually help me to have a CD. But because somebody was a part of a system and they needed their 20th referral, maybe they recommend to me a CD and it, it actually doesn't make sense for me, but they wanted to put a check mark in the system. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, so, so yeah. I'm just giving you some examples of, of how a system can be abused and, and who, who gets impacted is the member and their experience. Yeah. And so what's great is like, all right, if you are a leader, current leader, or even aspiring leader at our credit union listening, and you, you're thinking, man, I need my team members to drink the Kool-Aid. They're not referring with the hard 
of improving the financial well-being of our members, or they keep pushing the same product to this person that they keep pushing credit cards and this member already has all three of our credit cards. Why are they doing that? You know, and what I'm hearing you say is the challenge could be that it's just, it's so focused on the system and not a bigger purpose, a noble or motive. I think I might know why, because in the credit union uh, world, we get obsessed over process. Um, we, we hire people who are risk adverse and typically people who are risk mm-hmm. adverse are really good in the operation side of things. And so as you continue to hire process operations minded people for an industry that needs great process and great operations, because it's highly regulated, it, it makes sense to car- compartmentalize human behaviors into trackable systems of yes, no logic, like a busy yeah. workflow. Think about like a call center for a second. Let's create a uh, SOP, standardized operating procedure that um, within uh, 13 minutes, we are going to answer every member that calls it. So we created a system. Yeah. Well, somebody is eating potato chips. There's seven minutes on the clock, eight minutes on the clock. To them, now they have how many, what, eight minus, uh, so yeah, they got five about four minutes, minutes left, left, right? Eat potato chips. Yep. Uh, all while the members sitting, you know, waiting doo, 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 on hold, imagining a call center completely full of people. But in reality, we created a system that we thought was going to be helpful for the member. And the very same system is being used as a crutch to eat potato chips and not help mm. them. So do you see what I mean? So these systems, yeah. they, all, they all come with a good intention, but when ill-managed and, and not properly shown the light of context on, they can quickly turn into the very same thing that's hurting the member. It almost is like the team members thinking, I'm exceeding expectations still yeah. by eating potato chips. I, I'm so like, it's okay. one in 11 minutes and get a bonus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I got eight, eight extra chips. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. So with this, there, there's clearly a problem. There's a challenge. What are some solutions that you've used at your time at the credit union or that you've encouraged other credit unions to use that have really helped with this process, this system challenge? Yeah. I'm, I'm not a, uh, a hitchhiker. I'm not a, I'm not a sailboat racer, uh, but I have ice fished for Team USA in Latvia, Bulgaria, and Ukraine. I know a little bit about fishing. And I'm going to tell everyone in the credit union leadership world that to be able to catch something, you have to be fishing for it. So if you want to catch somebody abusing the call center system, you've got to be observant as to what's going on in the contact center. If that means that you have to call the contact center in a room while peeking out to the contact center representatives and say like, what's actually going on? Like you need to be fielding some recordings and listening to that from a training opportunity standpoint, there's a reason why we say all of our recording, all of our calls are being recorded for training purposes and that that should be happening. And so what if it is live branch transactions? Well, we can't record those, can we? No, no, not necessarily, but we can take our laptop, our branch manager laptop and pop uh, into one of the empty tower spaces that you likely have because you're likely short staffed. And so you probably have four teller stations and you're, you're, you're running with two tellers right now. So put a big fake plant in front of one, plop down with your manager laptop if you got one, uh, or log into that old uh, computer and you know, deflect all the members that try to come to you to the other te- teller representatives. And that allows you to be in, in the room, to hear the transaction, to fish for those things that are awesome that you can catch doing them, right? Put their light, their name in the lights, right? Brag on them. But also... You can see the person waiting in the member lobby. You can see the people eating potato chips <laughs> with the next teller, please sign up. And you can, mm-hmm. you can you can catch them doing it wrong. You can you can redirect those behaviors that we accidentally set up with a system. There, some of the credit unions have, actually have like a lobby tracker. And when people come into the to the credit union, they they put their name in to like a wait list kind of tracking system. And imagine yeah. this, like at, at the re- at the restaurant, when they give you like the little pager, it's kind of like that, right? The, so you, they're going to put their name in and we'll text you when you're, re- when you're ready. Well, the credit union representatives might be ready, but they can choose when to text somebody to, to say that they're ready. And they've got the countdown clock, right? And so if they're playing Tetris, uh, <laughs> they're playing solitaire, 
And, you know, I have to see every member within 15 minutes and that, that countdown clock is kind of going in the side, on the side of the screen there. They can, they can be playing solitaire and, and trying to like raise themselves and then, okay, fine. I'll, I'll send the text message now because you know, the 15 minutes of waiting in the lobby is over and I got to help the member. Now I'm, I'm not saying that all of your member representatives are doing this, but I am saying that some are and your members are being impacted by it. So if you've yeah. not secretly shopped your, your own shop, if you've not fished for those people doing it right to catch them doing it right and fish for those behaviors that you can redirect, it begins there. It begins secret shopping yourself. Feeling inspired? Want to learn how to coach your department to be a high performing team? Vertex Live Nationwide is an 11 session live online group that meets bi-weekly. In this course, Scott and I are going to talk about delegation, how to resolve conflict, effective decision-making practices, and of course, how to coach your team for performance. Go ahead, move the movement and sign up for Vertex Live Nationwide. Click the link in the show notes and we're excited to see you there. I want to camp out on this for a bit and make sure that our listeners heard because you shared a really good practical step that could be quick. It could be a 15 minute thing that you do uh, every day or once a week of, Hey, sit in your lobby or, Hey, I'm going to go work uh, over here with my laptop today where you can hear and see what's going on. I used to do that at Chick-fil-A where I would go out and I would be sweeping the parking lot, but I was listening to how my outside order takers were taking orders. And the one thing I wanted to address was, all right, you can catch them doing it right. Or you can redirect the sailing behavior to be more in line with your values as a credit union. Some people might be listening to this and it almost feels like you're teaching, you're like, we're suggesting, Hey, let's do a gotcha moment. You know, and what I want to say to those listeners is it's less about a gotcha moment, but it's more of, we really want to make sure that we're living out the mission or living out what we say we're about and that we're raising calling up potential. Like we talk about in coaching for performance, right? So it's not about this gotcha moment. It's, I want you to be the best you can be right now. And I noticed when you were waiting a few more minutes because you were playing Tetris or you were responding to a text and it wasn't a urgent family matter that we weren't really living out our mission. To our members, right? Listeners, I want you to know, we're not saying this is a gotcha moment. This is a, how can I maximize my team members? How can I help them be the best that they can be so we can best help our community? So we've talked about this idea of sitting in and listening and redirecting behaviors. What other solutions do you have with this idea of systems get, being a challenge in the referral sales world, Albrecht? Yeah. So um, try not to incentivize behavior too early in the process. So let's say that you sent your team to the referral sales champion class that ServiceStar puts on once a month and you, you're super excited. Yeah. You, you're already starting to see results and you're like, let's start giving people cash for things that they're selling. You got to baseline what normal is going to be post a sales training to be able to identify if you're going to overly compensate or underly compensate in an incentive program. It's actually better not to incentivize using money to, to start off with because once you give money an incentive program, it's really hard to take back. Like mm-hmm. it's impossible to take back. So yeah. <clears throat> yeah, remember how we were given $35 away from a credit card standpoint? Well, we, we realized you guys are really good at credit cards. Uh, so we're going <laughs> we're to pull that back uh, to 15 bucks. We kind of screwed that one up. It's a message that's not really received well. doesn't bode for a high respect level. Um, and you, it breaks trust. So don't take money away from your team. Just don't give it to them in the first place. Try out other means uh, for incentivizing. And you know what the, the best first means is? Hey, you know what? I noticed you're living out your mission today by uh, running the drive through and at the same time looking out for members' concerns. Uh, I, I heard you talk about the, that member who had all that money in their savings account and how they can make more money on their certificate of deposit. And just that little behavior there is a great example of living out our core values and our mission here at our credit union. Those little words that didn't take very long to say, actually, we've got it mm-hmm. recorded so we can go back and listen, maybe 10 seconds long. It was enough time investing in an in incentive program that didn't actually mean I'm going to give somebody money for a referral. Eventually, you should track it because what gets inspected gets respected. 
Um, but yeah. just remember the tracking system in and of itself is not <laughs> enough. If anything, it'll probably uh, be set up as a system against your membership. If it's, if it's not thoroughly coached and managed. And what, what I would say, speaking into that and maybe more, even a more practical step. When I was at Chick-fil-A, one of the Chick-fil-A's that they transferred me to, to help with the, we call it CEM scores, customer experience monitor, but that would be similar in the credit union to the NPS scores, right? Mm -hmm. I remember at this Chick-fil-A, what some of the management told me was, we're not really good at words of affirmation or speaking positively. Like we are focused so much on the numbers that we forget to call out the good. And that's where I shine. So that's what the value I brought it to that Chick-fil-A and something we did. So this with Chick-fil-A, you know, it was mostly high school and college age kids. And I really want to focus on the impact of just saying, Hey, you did a good job instead of going straight to money. Like you said, because yeah. when I went to this Chick-fil-A, they would always be like, Hey, if we reach this goal, uh, we'll bring pizza or donuts or we'll hire a food truck to come over and give everyone food. And it's fun, but it's hard to follow up on that every time. Yeah. So something I started doing that went a long way was we used GroupMe to talk to our team. When I noticed someone cleaned our ice cream machine well, they were being a good steward of what was entrusted with them and they followed the exact process and did it good. I would like take a picture and post it and say, hey, so-and-so did a great job doing this today in acting our value of being a good steward. Or if I saw someone run to a car because they forgot uh, the fries or a sauce they asked, I would like post a picture and be like, hey, look at this person living out uh, the mission of being the most caring company. Doing things like that, I know some of our listeners are like, no, but money really talks, right? But <laughs> for as a leader, your words have a lot of weight, a lot of impact in your words, create a culture that people want to be a part of or that they don't want to be a part of. So for me, group me sending a quick one sentence text with maybe a picture and tying it back to the mission was huge. And that's what I'm hearing you say as a solution. Is that right? Albrecht? It's, a, it's a good first step. It's a good first step. I mean, incentives work. Don't get me wrong. Just don't start with giving cash out because first and foremost, <laughs> you're going to see improved sales results if you send them the referral sales champion. And so if you start too early, you're going to overpay. We yeah. actually, we use the game of Monopoly as a incentive tester. <laughs> so we were giving away Monopoly money and we would realize what was too much because we'd run out of money. If we, if we gave, you know, every, every person $20 of Monopoly cash, eventually mm -hmm. you'd be out of $20 bills. You're like, okay, so maybe that was, that's too rich for a credit card. So if, if you did, yeah. if you did want to play around with middle ground between catching people doing things right verbally and actually giving cash, the game of Monopoly is fantastic for credit unions <laughs> because you're running a bank. I mean, what, what's better than that? And you can actually give people extra cash as an incentive for certain behaviors. And it, it's kind of, it's kind of like a fake modeled incentive plan because you're, you're actually, mm -hmm. you're tracking incentives, you're tracking you know, how much you've given out for each kind of behavior and, and you'll start to really, you'll be able to add it up without actually having to open up the GL for it, which is, yeah. uh, which is exciting. Don't open the GL until you've actually done a little uh, baselining and, and some modeling as to what it might look like if you were to yeah. open it up. Because a lot of times the incentive plan fails because you're just paying people more that we're already going to do it no matter what. And it's not enough of an incentive for the people that aren't going to do it to get off the fence and do it. And so how, how you set it up is really, really important. We also do strategic consulting with credit unions on incentive plan uh, setups. And uh, certainly we'd be, we'd be eager to entertain you sending all of your people to referral sales champion and having the great problem of having too many people selling now and having to revise your incentive plan and having us come in and consult on that. That's what we do here at Service Star Consulting. We give you great problems to have. Too many people at your credit union referring too many products, and now you got to figure out how to compensate them for it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. And I think this is a great way to wrap it up. So we've talked about referral sales. Maybe some of you have already taken this class and you're listening because you really wanted to dive into some of the challenges you may face. Maybe you're just a listener who uh, wants us to be part of your leadership journey, and you've realized, man, why, why aren't they drinking the Kool-Aid? Why aren't they really about the mission? And we've told you a common challenge, a common reason for this is that systems can actually get in the way of how we do referral sales. And we've talked about the solutions is 
We need to, as leaders, be leading change missionally. And one of the easy steps to do that, you said, Albrecht, is, hey, just set up near where your team's working and listen and focus on calling them out, doing it right, or focusing it back to the mission if they're doing a behavior that doesn't reflect how referral sales should look like. Uh, we've also talked about a lot of us feel that incentive, uh, doing incentives is the answer. And we talked about what could you do before bringing money into the picture? And what we're saying right now is the next call to action, if this is something you want to dive into more personally or for your credit union, what should people do? What's the call to action? Yeah. If you are are giving somebody a meets or exceeds because they're hitting the referral goal and after, as a result of listening to this podcast, you go out and you hear them saying, have you heard about our checking account? Then you are, your system is broken. They need to come to referral sales champion workshops, and you need to come and talk to one of our consultants about how to change the incentive program, or at least what you're tracking from a referral sales standpoint to be able to be in alignment uh, with your mission and your core values. Your mission is to not ask dumb questions (laughs) to members (laughs) like, did you know we have a checking account? That's not what you meant when you set up that referral system. And that's- Unfortunately, how the member service representative uh, took it when the next person passed it down to him is like, hey, as long as we just say something, 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 checking account, we get a point. And if we don't do it, we'll get in trouble. So just try to bring up checking accounts. Okay, man. <laughs> so, like, yeah, That's not why you set it up. That's not how you set it up. But I'm telling you, that's how it is getting communicated to some people at your credit union. And you got to observe, you got to measure it. You got you to gotta check it out for yourself and see if that's what's happening. So we've talked about referral sales. Uh, stay tuned. Follow us with the podcast as we keep discussing the journey towards leadership and how to be the best leader at your credit union. So this is Scott and Scott at the Credit Union Leadership Podcast. Service Star Consulting announces the new employee bundle. Three classes for the price of one. Your employees are going to get three great classes. They're going to get Credit Union PhD, where we talk about the history of the credit union movement and how the people helping people movement got started. This is going to be the groundwork for our next two classes. Service Excellence, which is one of my favorite, talks about how to deliver that Chick-fil-A-like level service to our members where they know we care about them. And that's not all. We even give you a third class, which is Becoming a Sales Champion, where we're focused on sales the way it should be, helping people. And we talk about skills to present products to our members so they know that we care about them and their needs. This is the new employee bundle, three classes for the price of one. Go in the show notes and click the link and look at these classes for yourself. Again, it's called the new employee bundle by Service Star Consulting.